The woman who is a Republican who voted Democrat for the first time is expecting a civil war. Um, she said, and now listen to this, listen to this. The angst follows months of widespread Black Lives Matter social justice protests. More than 90% were peaceful. But some conservative news outlets and GOP leaders, including President Donald Trump, have pointed to looting and destruction to argue that more federal law enforcement is needed to guard against violence, aiming their message squarely at suburban women. On the other side, there's the fear that right-wing anti-government extremists responding to the largest civil rights movement in 50 years have now aligned themselves with Donald Trump. After years of growing hate crimes and violence, experts say there is a concern that armed right-wing terrorists might take to the streets if there are delays in the election results or an unfavorable outcome, such as Democrat Joe Biden taking the White House. While the U.S. has a long history of violent protest from the fire bombings and shootings at abortion clinics by anti-abortion extremists to the 25 committed by left-wing weather underground terror group opposing Vietnam racism, experts say widespread predictions of election-related violence are unprecedented. Further fueling the potential violence, the staggering number of guns bought this year Gun dealers in June ran more than 3.9 million background checks on purchasers through the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, the highest number ever recorded in a single month. While background checks are not an exact measure of gun sales, they are widely used as a proxy. The violence will occur either way, says Gallagher. I don't know who Gallagher is. I must have missed it someplace else. If Biden wins, it'll be an excuse to try to delegitimize the results and go after perceived enemies on the left. And, of course, that means labeling pretty much anyone you disagree with Antifa. But I worry, too, if Trump wins, this will signal to those far right groups that have supported him, extremist groups like the Oath Keepers, Proud Boys and other groups like this. They will see this like open season and go after people that have been opponents of Trump. So even if he wins, you know, I think violence is going to happen. It's just going to be an opening of a door. May I suggest if you are promoting this and you're expecting it, you will get what you expect. I don't expect that. I don't want it. I pray against it. Please, Lord, Please protect us. Please thwart all of those that are trying to create violence. Please let those who are are, are smoke and mirrors be defeated, be exposed. But Amnesty International documented about 200 violent conflicts between protest groups out of approximately 12,000 protests nationally. Most violence occurred, according to Amnesty International, when armed right-wing groups showed up. Oh. (sighs) Trump has repeatedly said several cities with Democratic mayors are going to hell. They've called him Satan. They've called him Hitler. They've called him Mussolini. He's warned more cities will descend into chaos if Biden wins the presidency. Yes, it will. What makes you think that it won't? What, what, what evidence do you have that shows that Biden and the left want these things to stop? They are being funded by left-wing billionaires. That's what's happening. Now, it didn't help at all. Well, the Republicans, they, they, they took extremist Amy Coney Barrett And they confirmed her last night. Let me just give you some of the headlines, some of the things that were said. This is uh, Kamala Harris. Today, Republicans denied the will of the American people and confirmed a Supreme Court justice through an illegitimate process. What's illegitimate about it? Where is it illegitimate? It's not illegitimate. Even Jake Tapper has gone on and said there's nothing non-constitutional or unconstitutional. This is exactly what the Constitution spells out. All of their effort to gut the Affordable Care Act and strip health care from millions of people. Oh, we won't forget this. Is that a threat? Because it sounds like a threat. 
Uh, the uh, left-wing anti-Trump group Indivisible said Mitch McConnell and his Republican cronies affirmed Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, tarnishing the legacy of the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg and undermining whatever remaining faith the public still had in the court as an institution. So now they don't have any, they don't have any faith in the Supreme Court. Let's make this clear. The Supreme Court is now under the control of six far-right ideologues who have been chosen and confirmed not to administer justice, but to administer the wins for the Republican Party. Amy Coney Barrett is a threat to health and safety of all Americans. Oh, okay. We also had uh, Ocasio-Cortez. She tweeted, expand the court. Elon Omar, expand the court. Uh, she said, we are going to take back the White House and the Senate next week with a resounding uh, mandate from the people to fight back against Trump's illegitimate stacked judiciary. Really? Um, uh, Talib said, we must expand the court if we're serious about transformational change the people are crying out for. So they know already they have to change the rules. You know, I listened to one of the most obnoxious twisting of history I have ever heard from the New York Times. And that's saying something. Did you hear it this morning? The 2020 election? I didn't or mean the, the 2000 election? I thought you might have been referring to their electoral college history from last week, oh, which no. was utterly amazing. Oh, it's so they, they are just twisting mm. all of history. And, you know, they were they were twisting how uh, Gore, they were saying Gore just wanted some simple changes. And the Republicans, this is the exact quote, I think, uh, the Republicans were saying, hey, play by the rules that we're all in line. And then they made that sound like it was crazy. It's like say, getting to the end of the Super Bowl and saying, oh, you know what? Our team didn't win. You know what? We got to change some of the rules. Let me go back and look at some of those calls with these new rules. No, you play the game under the rules and it stands. They're doing this again. They know they can't get these things done. They know it's not constitutional, so they're going to gut the Constitution. If you vote for Joe Biden or you don't vote, you are, you are voting uh, for the destruction of the Constitution. You are. No vote is a vote. You have to take a stand. This is, and I hate this phrase. Let me, so let me change it. This is the last election under the Constitution of the United States as understood by the Founding Fathers if the Democrats win. This is the last time there will be a Supreme Court that actually decides what is constitutional and what is not. Instead, it will be a rubber stamp to move all of this Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, unconstitutional bullcrap through. You will lose the Electoral College. You will lose the filibuster. You will lose the Supreme Court of nine justices. This is what this is about. This is not about Donald Trump. Don't think this is about Donald Trump. This is about ending the United States of America as we know it.